We're here on a motion filed by Mr. Taylor on behalf of the father, Mr. Garcia, to reinstate visitation. Mr. Albee's with us for the department. Ms. Ledbetter is with us representing CASA. Mr. Turner's with us representing the children. Mr. Taylor's with us again representing Mr. Garcia, the father who is with us. Mr. Pirtle represents the mother, Ms. Dominguez. He is not with us, nor is Ms. Uh, Dominguez. This case was set for 9 o'clock. It's now 9.04. We'll go ahead and proceed in their absence. I'll watch the waiting room to see if they come in. We'll go ahead and proceed. Mr. Alvey, are you ready? Judge, I've made a proposal to Mr. Taylor, and I think he wants to talk to his client about that proposal. Okay. All right, then I will open breakout room for Mr. Taylor and his client. It looks like Mr. Taylor and his client are back. Mr. Pirtle has finally joined us for the mother, Ms. Dominguez, who is still not with us. Uh, Mr. Albee, where do we stand? Um, I'm not sure. Mr. Taylor? Yes, uh, uh, Mr. Albee, my client is in agreement uh, with the understanding that it'll be Monday before he can do the screening. I believe it's set up for Monday anyway. Okay. Judge, this is, and I, I, I sent the offer to Mr. Turner, so I don't know what his thoughts are on that. But here's what our position is. The department recognizes that Mr. Garcia has been um, working his services diligently. He's completed most, if not all, of those services. So we're requesting that he complete a UA and hair follicle drug screen. I believe that's scheduled for Monday. Um, if that is clean, well, we would like for him to screen today, but uh, it, if it can't be done till Monday, I understand, but that's our, our thought process was to screen today. But if that is a clean screen, then we would start two hours per week visitation for two weeks. Then we would go to four hours per week visitation with the understanding that we're working towards a monitored return for Mr. Garcia. Um, and um, we have not, Ms. Dominguez has not worked the services. She's not completed her service plan. So this agreement just reflects on what Mr. Garcia's position is. Okay. All right. Then uh, Mr. Taylor, is that your agreement? It is, Your Honor. And the, the difficulty with him screening today is that uh, his his job has him out of town today, but uh, he, he would not be opposed to today except for that. Okay, not a, not not a problem. The uh, court's aware that he's been testing negative on the UAs, and at least according to your motion, his hair strand uh, results have been lowered each time, so that's not a problem. Monday will be fine. Okay, Mr. Turner, are you in agreement? Um, I do have a question for Todd. Are, are you... Is the agreement for supervised visits or unsupervised visits? What I would have to refer that to Ms. Brown, but I would anticipate those would probably be unsupervised. We were, we're going to start with supervised. Okay. Yes. Excuse me. That, that's the way I presented it to, to Mr. Garcia would be that, that the initial the initial visits would be supervised. The initial visits would be supervised? Yeah, the, the two hours moving to four hours would be supervised, uh, transitioning from there into a monitored return. Okay. Yeah. Yes, Your Honor. I mean, I, Mr. Garcia has, has worked his services and pending a clean drug screen. Um, I would be in agreement with supervised visits um, moving toward a monitored return. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Sledbetter, is CASA in agreement? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Mr. Pearl, you don't have a dog in this fight, but do you have any problems with this? Uh, you're right, Judge. I have no dog, okay. but I have no problems. All right. Okay, then. I will approve that agreement reached. I will order that Mr. Garcia, both hair strand and UA drug screen by 4 p.m. on Monday. If those texts are negative, then I will order that his visitation be uh, either reinstated or started. I don't know if he had any before or not, but anyway, that the visitation will be uh, started for Mr. Garcia as announced today. And as I assume will be contained in the order from today. So stand in recess. I appreciate y'all working this out. Mr. Can I Garcia, say one thing? One thing, please. Yes. Um, 
I, I heard that they said that my wife hasn't completed services and she hit, she has your honor. I just wanted to verify that y'all can check with St. Francis and everything, okay. everything prior to where she's at. Mr. Garcia, that's between, that's between her and her lawyer. So I don't, we don't need okay. your input on that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Your honor. Yes, All sir. Right. Other, otherwise we'll stand in recess. Y'all have a good weekend. weekend. Final order. Mr. Okay. Alvey's with us for the department. Ms. Lemus is with us for CASA. Ms. Kincaid is with us representing the child. Mr. Michelson's with us representing the father. Mr. Harmon, who I show is with us. Uh, I say that. Oh, he's back in the waiting room again. He's still trying to join. We'll wait on him. And Mr. Michelson's, I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Adams is with us representing the mother, Miss Mariner, and I do not show her in the Mr. waiting room. Mr. Alvey, you may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. I would call Mr. Jim Coble. And where is Gabriel currently placed? Gabriel is placed at an RTC in Richmond, Texas. And how's he doing in that placement? For the past two to three months, he's been doing very well. Very proud of him. And prior to that, he had been placed with his father in, and he was going to school in Border. That's correct. And there were some issues with that, uh, with him at that school. But have those issues seem to be ironed out at his current placement? They are. He's not really had any significant disciplinary incidents in the past few months. Um, he's on probation uh, because of an incident in January. But since that time, he's completely turned around. He's going to school every day. Uh, not had any behavioral incidents and uh, making, making great progress. Is the placement there making sure that his medical and dental and mental health needs are being met? Yes. Um, specifically, is he receiving counseling um, to help him identify and control his behaviors? Yes, individual and group therapy. And is he on psychotropic med medications at this time? He is. He's on three different medications. And are those being monitored appropriately uh, at least once every 30 days by a psychiatrist? Yes, they are. Um, is Gabriel having regular contact with his father, uh, Mr. Harmon? Yes, he talks to him multiple times per week by phone. Um, are there visits? Um, in addition to the phone calls, are there visits that would be allowed if Mr. Harmon was able to go to see his son? Yes, uh, it is difficult for dad to to go down there to visit him, but we are uh, planning on trying to bring Gabriel up to visit this summer for a short visit. Are there any specific things that Mr. Harmon, Kenrick Harmon, is supposed to be doing um, in order to uh, be prepared when Gabriel might be able to come home? Um, beyond maintaining contact and keeping that bond strengthened with his son, um, we've we've set up a service with him for individual counseling. Uh, he hasn't been able to get that started yet, uh, but uh, we do think that'd be beneficial for him. And uh, that's something that's available to him. And has Mr. Harmon recently changed his residence he has and and do you feel like that was a positive improvement um, so that eventually gabriel could come home to mr Harmon? it's a positive improvement in terms of conditions of the home for uh mr Harmon, for his daughter who lives with him uh it's not large enough um considering the number of people who are in the home for gabriel to return to that home so if, uh, if we were looking at reunification in the future, there would need to be a change in residence again. Gabriel's mother is Vanessa Mariner. She resides in Colorado, correct? That's right. Have you had contact with her? Yes, I've had regular contact with her. And she's aware that Gabriel is in uh, the RTC? Yes. And does she have contact with Gabriel? Um, recently, yes. We have initiated uh, supervised therapeutic visits uh, by phone. 
and those are taking place once per week. Are there any particular services that Miss uh, Mariner needs to be working on at this point in time? Not at this point in time. Today, uh, you're just requesting that the department be continued as permanent managing conservator of Gabriel. Let him continue to work through his behaviors at his program um, with the eventual idea that maybe we can reunify him with his family. Correct. I'll pass with Ms. Sherman. Right, thank you, Mr. Adams. Mr. Cole, you mentioned that uh, Gabriel's had contact with his mother. Has, has those communications gone very well? Yes, they have gone very well. No issues. And they're starting to build a, a better bond? They are. Okay, no further questions, John. Thank you, Mr. Michelson. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Mr. Colville, is there any impediments to um, Kenrick going to counseling that he needs assistance with? No, yeah, he's just, I think, been focused on, on work uh, the past several months, and he's just been busy. But uh, I continue to ask him about it every month, and he, he continues to say that he wants to do it. He just hasn't uh, scheduled it and implemented it just yet. Okay. And the report otherwise says he's stable, correct? Yes. Okay. Pass the witness, Your Honor. Thank you, Ms. Kincaid. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Koval, we know that Gabriel's on several psychotropic medications. Um, we had a, you and I actually had a meeting with his placement here recently. Is that correct? That's correct. And we discussed with them the medications that he's on and, and they made a slight adjustment to that. Is that correct? Yes. And it seems like that adjustment has actually been beneficial for him. Is that fair to say? Yes. Very fair to say. Good. So, but you, I feel like you keep a really close eye on those and try to make sure he's not being over medicated. Is that correct? Yes. Because when, when I first took this case in March or April of last year, he was on a lot of medications and he couldn't stay awake. Um, so, and, and that persisted for too long. So we, uh, we really want to make sure not to go back down that path again. So it's been a very conservative approach to his medications. Uh, and I think that they've done a really good job of dialing that in and getting it to where it needs to be. Okay. Thank you. I'll pass the witness. All right. Anyone else have further questions for Mr. Coble? No, no. Uh, Mr. Coble, as far as the, talking about the medications, um, until those were adjusted, uh, Gabriel wasn't even able to stay awake at school. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, sir, Judge. He would uh, either not go to school at all or he would um, or he would get really upset when they woke him up at school and then he would disrupt and have to be sent home. Yeah. And he, he's doing much better at school now, too. Is that also correct? Yes, sir, Judge. Uh, he has been, been going to school every day, staying all day. It's actually terms of his probation that uh -huh. he not have any unexcused absences and that he not have any disciplinary referrals. And for three months now, he has not had any of those. Great, great. I and his that, grades are good. His grades are good. He's got a yeah. couple of Bs and the rest are A's and B's. Yeah, that's great. He was previously at one point at a RTC in Houston. Is that right? Briefly, yes, sir. And I, it's it's obvious from what I've read, this new placement has made a big difference for him. It's made a huge difference. They're they were very well structured, and honestly, I think the previous placement was not really an RTC. I think they were more of a GRO, and they were not equipped uh, to handle his behaviors. So All he's right. in a good place right now. Okay, thank you. Sounds like things are going well, Mr. Alley. Did you have any other witnesses? No, Your Honor, we rest. All right, thank you. Mr. Adams, any witnesses? No, Your Honor, we rest. All right, Mr. Michelson? No, Your Honor, we rest. Thank you. Ms. Kincaid, recommendations? Uh, recommend that continue the current placement. Gabriel's doing well. I do want to thank Mr. Koval for being so diligent about this. I mean, we've met and met over and over um, to try to help Gabriel, and, and I just appreciate his efforts in that. But Gabriel's doing well. Great, great. 
And I, I echo that, Mr. Coble, you always do a good job, but it's obvious that you are really looking after Gabriel's best interests. So thank you for that. Thank you both. Does Remus Costa have anything to add? Uh, not much further, Your Honor. Uh, we did go out to visit him earlier this month um, in his placement. He is really doing very well. Um, and we've really tried to encourage him to continue to do well. He's he's even, um, I, re I remember in the past, he, he was pretty reserved when you talked to him, but now he's he's opening up more. Um, and I think, and I really think it has to do with a lot of the medications. He's, he's just more awake now. Um, placement reports, things are going also very well. Um, and uh, his ther I, I've reviewed his like therapy notes and different things and um his therapist reports great things also um especially in terms of the visits with mom um they're working on repairing that um and talking about healthy relationships and um forgiveness and um i just really want to also i guess echo and thank mr Colville as well for his hard work um with, with Gabe and uh, just continue to encourage parents to encourage him as well and make as many visits as they can with him. I know they're very important to him. Okay. All right. Thank you. Sounds like things are headed in the right direction. So I will continue the department's permanent managing conservator. I'll continue the parents as uh, possessory conservators and I will continue Gabriel's current placement. I'll set the next review hearing for uh, October 11th, 2024. That will be by Zoom like today's hearing, so parties and attorneys can go on the court's online docket a day or two in advance uh, of October 11th to see exactly what time we'll have that hearing. Mr. Coble, once again, thank you for all your hard work. Here on an adversary hearing. Thank you, Justin. Uh, Mr. Right, Alvey's with us for the hearing. department. CASA is with us with Ms. Garrett. Mr. Michelson's with us representing the child. Mr. Adams is with us representing the alleged father, Mr. Thibodeau, who's not with us. And Miss Kincaid is with us, representing the mother, Miss Barton, who is with us. All right. Um, yeah. I Miss Barton understands um, kind of what's going on in the case, and she's willing to work with the department. Um, she has some concerns that you know she wants to bring to your attention. So, but she is willing to cooperate with the department. Okay. All right. Then um, before we get going, where is Bryson currently placed? Anybody? RTC Boys to Men in Houston. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. All right, Mr. Alvey, um, do you have any witnesses? You want me? To, you want to go straight to Miss Barton? I think, Judge, that, that based upon what Miss Kincaid's uh, announcement is, we can just go to Miss Barton's uh, discussions first. If if I need to call somebody after that, I may. Okay. Ms. Kincaid, do you want to call Ms. Barton as a witness, or do we just want to talk yes. about what her concerns are? Uh, I'll call her, please. Okay. All right. Uh, Ms. Barton, you're the mother of the child, the subject of this suit. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And you understand that, that he's got some behavioral and mental health issues. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And you've made numerous, maybe countless efforts to get this young man treatment and help that he needs. Is that fair to say? Yes, ma'am. And this has been years, a years long struggle that that you've tried to get him the help he needs. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And you've gotten to the point where you just need help and you're kind of running out of options. Is that fair to say? Yes, ma'am. And um, you are concerned that, you know, he's in placement where he's at. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And one of the reasons is that he's managed to abscond from this RTC. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And he also, um, he has a diagnosis of autism. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And his his mental function, at what age do you think that he functions? Yeah, probably five, six. Um, his IQ is that of a 64. So probably around there. Okay. And, and one of the concerns that you had whenever he was living with you is that he was just notoriously bullied at school. Is that correct? Yes, sir. I mean, yes, ma'am. Sorry. No, you're good. And I was looking at the judge. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so you, you're concerned at the current placement because of his diagnosis of autism and his mental 
um, capacity, you're afraid that he's going to be either bullied or exposed to things that are just outside of what he can handle. Yes, ma'am, as well as him running away. Yes. Okay. And so you want to work with the department, but you also want to have some input into where, you know, you want to have some input into where he goes such that they can help with his autism. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, basically, you're just afraid that a kid with his mental capacity is going to get thrown in with the, the teenagers and, and it's just going to continue to be an issue. Yes, ma'am. And the reason is, is because of, may I say it? May I, may I continue? Yes, yes ma'am. Sure. Okay. It's because he was at the pavilion. And when he was at the pavilion, he learned about gang signs. Um, he learned about inappropriate things. And even when I had to go and pick him up because they would not hold him, um, I flipped the page over and it had gang signs all over it. And this is a kid that gave my son, you know, his number and he had my son's number. So then I had to monitor my son's numbers and block that number that was coming in. But any other number I had to block. Um for fear that he would try to get my son jumped into a gang. He doesn't understand um, imminent danger at all. Okay. And um, you also, uh, he also has some medical issues. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And it's mental. yes, ma'am. One of them is scoliosis. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And what other issues medically does he have? Well, I mean, he's got scoliosis and um, that's about it as far as hurting wise. The others are mental. Okay. And you just want to make sure that that medical, that he gets medical treatment for that like he's supposed to. Is that correct? Right away. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank and you all. Also, dermatologist, he has really bad problems with his face and he'll pick his face until he, until they bleed. Okay. If it, it's not done. That's a, a nervousness that he has. Okay. And is he on any prescriptions now? Um, I, as far as I've been told, no medication has been um, changed. Okay. It when he was with you, thing. when he yes. was with you, he was on prescription medications? Yes. Okay. Every one of them. Mm -hmm. Okay. What were those? For his prescription medications? It's on now. Or what's he, what he's on now? Whenever he was with you, what prescription medications was he on? He was on Lamacol, and then he was on uh, Trazodone, uh, and they introduced a new one. And um, I cannot remember what that what that was. It's been it's been a while. Okay, but you just want to make sure that he gets seen regularly by a psychiatrist and that he gets the prescription medications he needs as well. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. I'll pass the witness, your honor. Mr. Alvey, any questions? No, no. Mr. Adams. No questions, your honor. All right. Um, Mr. Michelson. No questions, your honor. Okay. Mr. Alvey, anything further from the department? No, your honor. We're, we're take the things that Ms. Barton has said into account and we will work with her and try to help this young man. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Kincaid, did you have any other witnesses? I rest, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Adams, any witnesses? No witnesses, Your Honor. I've been unable to locate my client and I believe the department has had the same troubles. Okay. Mr. Michelson, uh, recommendations? Thank you, Your Honor. I would recommend that the department be, uh, be named Temporary Managing Conservator and that uh, continue, uh, that placement be continued with a caveat to explore whether or not the R2C is uh, capable and qualified of dealing with autistic children. Okay. Um, that's it, I guess. All right. And Casa, anything to add? Ms. Garrett? Thank you, Your Honor. Um, there was a couple of uh, my coworkers that did go see him. It was the day he was placed there. He said that he loves it there and and wants to stay. Um, he did get mad while they were playing a game and took off out of there. 
they did find him immediately and brought him back. Um, I do have a Zoom scheduled with him for Friday, next Friday, um, but I will also be talking to the placement um, and just kind of make sure that they know everything that mom has said now, because um, I did not even know any of this till now. But um, otherwise, you know, he, he's a sweet kid um, from what the other classes, whenever they went and saw him, they said he was just really sweet. But um, he knows that he's got problems and knows that he needs help. And that's a good thing. OK. All right. Thank you. OK, then um, I'll make my ruling here in a second, but I'm going to kind of explain it to Miss Barton so she'll understand. Miss Barton, um, what I'm going to do, typically they ask that the department be named Permanent man or temporary managing conservator. I'm going to order that both the department and you be named what's called joint managing conservators. That gives you say so as to what's going on with your son, whether you think he's placed in the right placement or not. And I'm not, all, I've, all I'll tell you is that uh, you, Miss Kincaid, is a very capable lawyer. If if you think there's changes that need to be made, you're going to have an equal say. Just as I'll listen to you, just as much as the department. And she, she knows how to schedule a hearing. If we get to a point where you and the department are at odds with each other, that's when I'll have to step in and make the decision. But you're going to have the same say-so about your son as the department does while we're going through this process. Thank you, sir. So, Can uh, I say something, sir? Yes, yes ma'am. I, I do have concerns about the RTC. Um, I did not get my phone calls. I have only spoken to my son twice, and one of them was when he ran away, and he ran 14 miles away from boys to men to Collins Boulevard, and he got a phone call because there was a security guard there at the store. First thing that he did whenever he was running, he stopped, and he doesn't know anything about imminent danger, so he thinks everybody's friendly, and gave a hobo a hoodie of his and then he stopped at a thrift store and asked for water still didn't understand praise god that he did find that fuel shop because he called me and he was crying and he said mom i found roaches on my pillow they wouldn't let me in the refrigerator my son because of his medication nervousness and everything else he overeats he tends to eat, and he's been doing that since he was four or five. And they did not even find him. He was not placed immediately back at the RTC. It was literally, I had to contact Michael, um, and I had to text him and tell him what was going on while on the phone with my son. And he had to talk to Bryson as well. And then he was placed back at the RTC. My thing is, is that it's a, not a lockdown facility. And with it not being a lockdown facility, Bryson was able to walk up, unlock the door and run because he is an eloper. Um, if you heard about him, he's white deer track, cross country, all that kind of stuff. I want Bryson placed in a place where it is a lockdown where it's not something that he can run away because my mama heart I couldn't handle knowing that he was there and he ran 14 miles away RTC never even called me and when I talked to the guy yesterday he said we're not supposed to call you your case manager is supposed to call you but how would he know if RTC he couldn't even get in touch with RTC for the longest so my phone calls, I've not been able to even talk to my son only. This has been twice since April the 8th, since I called CPS and had him removed. And I have a concern about that place. All right. Let me let me just explain to you where we're at. Yes, sir. That's why I'm naming you a joint managing conservator. Um, I don't know. We have, number one, your son's got needs that probably are going to have to be addressed in an RTC. Yes, uh, sir. We can't just put him in a, a normal foster placement because he won't get the help he needs. So, oh yes, sir. yeah, that's, yes, sir. Our, that's our first hurdle we've got to get over. Right. Second, second thing is, uh, he can only be placed where there is a placement available. So, you and Miss Kincaid need to talk to 
Mr. Colwell and anybody else with either St. Francis or the department, you've, I've got to have options. I can't just say we're going to put him in a, a lockdown facility because I don't know if there is one and I don't know if there's a bed available or will be for several months. So that's exactly why I'm naming you a joint managing conservator. You yes. guys try to work it out and find a place that's acceptable. If you can't, then it may be on you to find a place that, you know, I, I can't, I don't know what's available. So I can't just sit here and rule that he's going to be placed in a lockdown facility because that doesn't give anybody any guidance. So I have to, I have to put it place so uh, I'm, I'm willing to schedule a hearing anytime we need to if if y'all can't come to an agreement that you found a better place for him then uh, somebody's got to bring me an option and then I can decide whether he stays where he is or he goes to this other place if you can find one so that's kind of how the process works it's not it's not the best process in the world but uh, we got way more kids to be placed than we have places to put them so uh that's kind of the struggle we deal with every day in this court so uh i'm willing to work with all of you and if i have to make those decisions i'll make those decisions but i have to have some options first so miss kincaid you were raising your hand yes your honor i just wanted to let you know she's got a list of facilities and i've let her know that we'll we need to work with saint francis and get that list and so we're we're already on the track your great. honor sounds great so um as i said I'm getting ready to announce our next hearing date, but I can move that up at any time I have to. Yes, Ms. Bartman? Yes. Um, I've already been told that the um, RTC in Houston has already discharged Bryson, and there's 14 days to be able to place him. We'll, we'll, yeah. work, we'll work on it. It's usually, we'll work a 30, on it. it's usually a 30 day notice. So, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's 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 where we're at. Y'all y'all get to work on it. And if I have to intervene, just bring me some options so that and it, you got to understand, Miss Barton, it's got to be a place that St. Francis contracts with because uh, or else I'm going to have to hear something. And I have the ability to order a specific place, even if they don't contract. I don't like to do that. Uh, and sometimes it doesn't work out. So uh, Miss Kincaid, she's good at doing this. So between Miss Kincaid and Mr. Colwell and the people at St. Francis, y'all try to work something out. If you can't, again, like I said, you got to bring me some options. So. And I just have one, well, actually two questions, sir. May I ask those? You can ask them. I don't know if I can answer them. I'm really not supposed to. <laughs> advice. So what, what are your questions? Well, it's about um, the CPS uh, said that I didn't, I, I did not sign a form. Ms. Barton, um, that's something that we can talk about. He's not going to be able to talk to you about those things. We talked about it yesterday, but we okay. can we can talk about it some more. If okay. We and I just wanted to know about the charges against me. Are those being dropped or what am I doing with those? That's also not Judge Graham. So I don't know what you're talking about. I haven't heard a word about it. And if it's important to our case, that somebody will bring it to my attention. Mr. Okay. Cole is raising yes, his hand now. I feel like a grade school teacher. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Your Honor, I just wanted to raise a concern. Um, last night I received a call from the RTC. I had coordinated a call uh, between uh, Miss Barton and her son Bryson. Uh, and of course, those are monitored calls. Um, <clears throat> Daniel was the uh, staff at the time. He said that uh, he eventually had to stop the call, having warned uh, Miss Barton, uh, previously, he said it was the most inappropriate conversation he's ever monitored. Mr. Uh, Mr. Caldwell, this is not the appropriate time to bring this up. If you've got issues, bring it to me, and then I will bring it to the board, please. Okay, that's not true. Uh, listen, we're not, we, we're not going to go there today. If I have to, I'll order that a therapist set in on any telephone conversations between you and your son. I can do that in a heartbeat. And if some, if somebody brings testimony before me uh, about an inappropriate conversation. That's what I'll do. I'll just order that it all be through a therapist. Now, okay. y'all try to work this out because I don't micromanage my cases, but if you're not getting to talk to your son, then y'all agree on a time. I don't care if it's what once, twice a week, whatever, on a certain day at a certain time, and I'll order that. And then the, the facility will have to oblige my order and you'll know when you're going to have visits with your son. Y'all pick the times, but I'll be happy to order that. So if y'all can't work it out, 
you just let me know and I'll pick a day and time and that's what we'll do. So, Okay, Judge, how- thank you so much for your time. Uh-huh. Okay, um, I will, as I said, I'm going to name the department and Ms. Barton Joint Managing Conservators. I'm going to continue Bryson's current placement. I'm going to order that Bryson's medications be reevaluated by and reviewed by a licensed psychiatrist as soon as possible. And I'll also order that he be seen by a, a physician. And if the physician thinks it's necessary, he'd be referred to a dermatologist. So. As well as the orthopedic, sir? I didn't hear you. I don't remember hearing anything about an orthopedic. For his scoliosis? We'll, we'll bring that up at our next hearing. Yeah, that'll okay, have to, thank you that'll so have to much. Start. It's just like anybody has insurance. It has to start with a primary care physician, and they make the referral to a specialist. I, I can't start ordering that because I'm not the insurance companies. Okay, and so do I. Do, who do I talk to about Bryson's case? Just my attorney? You talk to your lawyer, and your lawyer will talk to the people with St. Francis, and you're a joint managing conservator. Once once we know who's dealing with, with, with Bryson through St. Francis, you can talk to them because you have the same say-so as the department. St. Francis works for the department, basically. They don't call it that, but that's what it is. So, okay. uh, And Ms. Kincaid's familiar with this. She's good at this, so she can answer most of your questions where I can't. Legally, I can't. Okay. So. Is Todd Alvey, he is, is he the one who's with St. Francis? No, no. He He's the attorney for the department, so you don't okay. talk to him. You can't, you can't talk to the lawyers other than your own without all the lawyers and being present, so... Okay, Ms. thank McKay, you, sir. Ms. Kate can walk you through all this. I promise you, she's good at this. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, all right. Our next hearing, we'll have the status hearing on June 5th, 2024. That will be by Zoom, just like today's hearing, so parties and attorneys can go on the court's online docket a day or so in advance of June 5th to find out exactly what time we'll have. Here on a status hearing, Mr. Graff is with us for the department. Uh, Casa is with us. Mr. Michelson is with us representing the child. Mr. Adams is with us representing the father, Mr. Thibodeau, an alleged father I show. Ms. Kincaid is with us representing the mother, Ms. Barton. And we also have Bryson has joined us today, I guess. Is Bryson there? Hi, he's on his way. Okay, I, and I can barely hear you, sir. So he's on his way. <clears throat> All right, Mr. Adams, your client's not in the waiting room that I can see. Were you expecting your client? No, Your Honor, I don't think anybody's been able to find him. Okay. And Ms. Kincaid, were you expecting your client? Your Honor, I am expecting her. Um, we've sent her, we resent her the link for some reason she couldn't get on this morning. Um, but I, we've been in contact with her this morning and she's supposed to be here. Okay. I'll watch the waiting room, see if she makes it. Mr. Graff apparently fell out, so I'll get him back in. Okay. Yeah. I mean, she called my office five minutes ago. Okay. So. Sorry, Judge. I'm having trouble with my Your Honor, if morning. there's a period of waiting for the mother, I was wondering if I could speak with Bryson for a few minutes before the hearing. Yeah, you, you can when he gets here. Okay. We're going to have to get going. Uh, we've got 13 minutes before our next hearing starts. I'll watch for Bryson and uh, Ms. Kincaid. I'll watch for Ms. Barton to come into the waiting room. Okay. Uh, Mr. Graff, you may proceed. Morning, Your Honor. Uh, we're here on the matter of Bryce status hearing, and uh, the state, uh, on behalf of the state, we are prepared to proceed. Thank you. Mr. Graff. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Caldwell, you're the current caseworker in this uh, in this case, are you not? Yes. And have you been able to determine whether there have been any prior court actions involving Bryce, such as a prior removal? Uh, prior to this removal, uh, I, I don't think there was a removal. Okay. And um, have you been able to serve all the parties? Uh, meaning to work with the parties? Uh, the, the mother and the father specifically. Have you been able to serve them? Uh, the, the father yeah. we have not the father we have not been able to serve. Okay. In what efforts? His whereabouts are unknown. Okay. What efforts have you made to try and locate him? I believe we have done the uh, finders. Okay. And um, is have the, the parties that you have notified, have you been able to uh, have any of them completed an ICWA questionnaire? 
I'm sorry, an ECWA questionnaire? Yeah, to, to your knowledge, is the Indian Child Welfare Act applicable in oh, this I'm case? Sorry. Based? Uh, yes, they uh, they have completed that, and there is no uh, involvement or connection with that. Okay. And um, have you created a service plan at this point in time? Yes. And uh, was that created in collaboration with the mother? Yes. And did she sign the service plan? Yes. Okay. And and did you file that with the court? Yes. Okay. What are the uh, the services that she's agreed to do? Uh, a, a psychosocial uh, evaluation, uh, continued counseling, uh, parenting classes, uh, maintain transportation, housing, and her uh, disability income. Okay. Verification and it would, of those things. I'm sorry, go ahead. Just verification okay. of those things. Okay. And would you say those services are narrowly tailored to address the needs of this family? Yes. Okay. And are you asking uh, that the service plan be made in order of the court? Yes. Okay. And where is Bryson currently placed? Boys to Men, Houston, Texas. Okay. And how is he doing in that placement? Uh, at this time, he's doing well. Okay. And what efforts were made to find a fictive kin or a relative caregiver who could uh, take care of Bryson? Uh, we have, beginning with CPS and then ourselves, uh, there, there are no uh, uh, relatives or fictive kin. I'm in contact with uh, um, Lindsay's mother. Uh, who is a, a great support system for Lindsay and will be for Bryson. And uh, Micah is the older sister, and uh, she's not a good candidate for uh, placement. Judge, with the, uh, I, I don't know if it's bandwidth problems in the office, but I'm wondering if the court would... Uh, uh, allow me to go off video while I finish my yep. questioning. It might help with yep. the internet connectivity problems. Absolutely. We've got eight minutes to finish this hearing. So yeah, you can turn your camera on. Thank you, Judge. Okay, Mr. Colwell, um, I believe you said that there was no, um, there were no relatives or fictive kin available um, to take care of Bryson at this point in time. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And um have you asked uh, Bryson himself uh, in a developmentally and age appropriate manner about possible placement options? Uh, yes, he is wanting to uh, return home. Um, he likes his current placement, but I believe he understands that that's not what he where he would want to stay until he uh, becomes an adult. Okay. And what reasonable efforts have been made to either return him home? Uh, uh, since that looks to be the only viable option at this point outside of the care that he's in now. Right. Um, uh, he is receiving uh, um, therapy. Uh, he is learning new coping mechanisms. Um, he has uh, been exposed to a, a regular schedule, discipline, structured environment, um, all of these things uh, are preparing him to return home. And Lindsay is uh, uh, continuing with her counseling, um, uh, developing, having a, a good uh, reinforced uh, uh, um, support system with her mother. Uh, and uh, so all of these things um, work towards a possible return home. All right, let, let me interrupt right. you. Ms. Ms. Barton's just entered the waiting room. Let's get her in. All right, for the record, Ms. Barton, the mother has now joined us. So, Ms. Graff, you okay. can continue. Thank you, Your Honor. And then, uh, Mr. Colwell, um, so has there been some tentative discussions if things go well about uh, the possibility of a, a return home prior to the next school year? Uh, there have been some tentative discussions with both the mother, uh, uh, grandmother, and uh, my supervisor. Okay, but for now, um, is it your testimony that uh, uh, he should be uh, maintained uh, as a TMC uh, under the state this time? Yes, at this time. 
Okay. And do you believe that uh, that plan is in the best interest of Bryson? Yes, at this time. Okay. And then last question with regard to the father again, um, are you requesting an order to grant substituted service or has that already been done in this case? I am not aware that that has been done. Okay. So are you requesting that at this time then? I would need to consult with my supervisor just so I understand that more fully, but I believe yes. Okay. I pass this witness. All right. Um, Mr. Colwell, would it be a continuing danger to the physical health and safety of the child or to the family to return him home today? Yes. Would it be contrary to the child's welfare to be returned home today? Yes. Okay. All right. Ms. Kincaid, questions? Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Regarding Bryson, has he, since he's come into the care of the department, uh, seen a doctor? Yes. Okay. And as a result of that, were there any referrals made? The It, it was brought to the doctor's attention, the various concerns that uh, the mother had raised. And the doctor, upon examining him, he made no referrals. Okay. So... Um, if if there are any concerns, any ongoing health concerns, is that something that the department and Ms. Barton can work together to address? Absolutely. Okay. And um, is he on any medications? Yes, he is. Okay. Uh, are any of those psychotropic medications? Yes. Okay. Is he, uh, are those being monitored by a physician or a psychiatrist every 30 days? Yes. Okay. And uh, your prior testimony is that, you know, there are some conversations that have started that maybe he could return home before school starts in August if, if things go well? Yes. Okay. Um, but right now we're just working on stability. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And has Ms. Barton submitted to you any uh, alternative placements for Bryson? No. I'm sorry? No. Okay. Um has she expressed any concerns to you about his current placement? Uh, in the past, yes, but not not currently. Okay. And what were those concerns? The concerns had to do with, uh, uh, as she understood it, uh, 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 allowing him to run away um, the first time. Um, uh, different things like that, allowing him to be, as he understood it, bullied uh some confrontations with the staff those those but but all of that has been resolved and there's a better clearer understanding of all of those various items that raised concern for her okay so uh regarding the bullying is that something that you know the placement is working on uh yes and as it turns out it it, it was not uh true bullying it was a as bryson would say it was a misunderstanding Okay, but you know Bryson is on the autism spectrum, and so sometimes maybe he may feel like there's something going on. And yes, uh, we have addressed every incident, and uh, every effort has been made to uh, correct um, any challenges that had uh, manifested in the past. Okay, thank you. I'll pass the witness. All right. Mr. Colwell, the father is an alleged father, and he's not been located from the what I read in the testimony I've heard. Has there been a service plan created for him, or is that going to be done after he's served? There was one created in, in right. the, yes. Is St. Francis or the department asking, I go ahead and order that service plan for him today, and then we'll figure out once he is served whether or not he is the father? Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mr. Adams, questions? No questions, Your Honor. All right. Uh, Mr. Michelson, questions? Yes, Your Honor. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, Mr. Colwell, um, there was a hospitalization this month for Bryson, correct, on the 22nd? Uh, yes, of last month. Okay. Me, Mr. Max, let me interrupt. Just for the record, Bryson has now joined us. Okay. Go ahead. Um, he was hospitalized on the 22nd, correct? Yes. And how long was he hospitalized? Approximately uh, four days. And what was the basis of the hospitalization? Um, aggressive uh, behavior, destruction of a window in his bedroom, running away. Um, that was the basis to have okay. him evaluated and 
uh, some time to uh, maybe get some immediate treatment and evaluate his current uh, mental health. Okay. <clears throat> and what was the outcome of that hospitalization? Uh, he was discharged back to Boys to Men. Uh, he did have, I spoke with him, he and professionals, uh, he did have a good experience there. Uh, and I believe he's learned, uh, uh, they reviewed his medication. Uh, I believe that uh, overall it was a positive, there's positive results of uh, his time spent at West Oaks. Was there any changes to his treatment plan? The only change was uh, one-to-one supervision, a, uh, a heightened sense of supervision at Boys to Men. Okay. And is he tolerating that supervision? Yes. To my knowledge, yes. Okay. Uh, pass the witness, Your Honor. All right. Anyone have further questions for Mr. Cobble? All right. Um, Mr. Graff, do you have any other witnesses? No other witnesses, Your Honor. Ms. Kincaid, witnesses? Yes, I'd call Ms. Barton, Your Honor. All right. Ms. Kincaid? Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Ms. Barton, I know that you came in a little bit late on... Um, the hearing due to some technical issues, um, but did you hear the uh, caseworker's testimony that uh, Brasson has seen um, a physician since he's come into care? Yes, I have. Okay, and that they they didn't make any additional referrals. Yes, I did. I don't. I don't agree. Okay, so you've got some concerns that he may that he may need to see a dermatologist. That and an orthopedic surgeon, yes, ma'am. Okay, or or an orthopedic doctor, whatever. Yes. Okay, so is that something that um, you know we can work with the department on? I believe so. Yes, he okay. has full justice of his spine. Okay, and um, concerning his uh, current placement at, at Boys to Men, is that a placement that is that you believe is appropriate for him at this time? I'm I'm okay with it, but um, I'm. I just kind of thought that Bryson making all of the um, the progression that he has, that he could be returned home. Okay. So if you, one of the goals is to try to get him home before school. Is that one of your goals? I'd like to get him home as soon as possible. Okay. Um, and is that something that we can talk with the department about? Yes. I kind of thought um, he would be released this month, but I, I guess not. Okay. And in the meantime, you've got some services that you're working. Is that correct? Yes. His counselor's going to be in place and I'm looking for a referral for the turn center. He still has his psychiatrist and um, imagine pediatrics is also on board. Okay. But concerning your counseling, you're, you're doing that. Oh yes, ma'am. In compliance yes, with the, your service plan. Yes, ma'am. Um, I was, um, told by um, Mr. Cal Cole that um, I'd have to be paying for my counseling and that's fine. I've been paying for my counseling. Okay. I'll pass the witness. All right. Mr. Adams. Oh, I'm sorry. You, we, I'm sorry. Flush back up. Mr. Graff, you're next. Do you have any questions? No questions, Your Honor. Thank you. All right. Mr. Adams. No questions. Mr. Michelson. No questions. All right. Uh, just for the record, I believe at the last hearing that we had in April, I think I had ordered that Bryson's be seen by a dermatologist. I had not heard anything about an orthopedic surgeon. Ms. Barton, what's what's? why do you feel like he needs to see an orthopedic surgeon? He has uh, scoliosis, okay. and I brought that up. Um, it was supposed to be put in place. Um, I had talked to Mr. Cal about it, and it was supposed to be put in place what, what, uh, at the last what? hearing. What was supposed to be put in place? That he see an orthopedic surgeon because of his back. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yes, All right. Sir. Ms. Kincaid, any other witnesses? No, Your Honor. I rest. Mr. Adams, witnesses? No witnesses, Your Honor. I rest. All right. Mr. Michelson, any witnesses? No witnesses. We rest. Okay. All right. Mr. Michelson, recommendations? I would recommend that the current placement continue and... Um, the department remained temporary managing conservator. Okay. Cost anything to add? Uh, nothing much further, Your Honor. Um, he, he seems to be doing okay since his return from the hospital. Um, and we would just like to continue placement at this time um, so he can continue to get some of those um, needs taken care of. 
Okay. All right, then. I will uh, continue the department and Ms. Barton as joint managing conservators. I'll continue Bryson's current placement. I'll order uh, the services as contained in the service plans for Ms. Barton and Mr. Thibodeau. And I will uh, grant the request and I will order substituted service on Mr. Thibodeau. And I will order that Bryson be seen by a dermatologist and an orthopedic surgeon. Ms. Uh, Barton, I just want to kind of explain something to you. You can talk to your lawyer. Ms. Kincaid will explain it in more detail. But this is a case, what, what we call a re refusal to accept parental responsibility. And if you're saying you thought he, you thought he would be home by now and you wanted him home by now, these cases are a little different than a regular removal because you asked that we get the department get involved. So talk to Ms. Uh, Kincaid about that. We don't have time to do it today, but we can certainly set a hearing on that to decide whether or not you want your son back and whether or not the court thinks it's okay to send him back to you. So that's that's how this case is a little different than a normal removal. So, yes, just, so yes. you, just so you're aware of that. So, okay, yes, uh, I will set the next initial permanency hearing unless something comes up about returning uh, Bison home. The next hearing will be scheduled for September 18th, 2024. And again, if we need to have a hearing on any other matters, just contact our office and we'll set a hearing much quicker than September 18th. Okay. Thank you. Uh -huh, thank you. That will conclude thank this. Everybody, hearing. have a good rest of your week and have a good weekend. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Uh -huh, thank y'all.